Whoa, what's going on guys? So, it is a nice big back day today. We're, uh, we have everything in place, we're trying something new to hopefully have a nice thick back pump. You know, the weight gain I was saying the other day was uh, <clears throat> not going as efficient as possible. So we're trying to do new things to get that weight back on because losing weight just because you're sick, man, that that sucks, you know. But, you know, you got to play the cards you dealt, like the hands you wanted, learn something new, and maybe you figure something out that makes everything else even better. It's just a matter of seeing. So it's <clears throat> about 11 a.m. right now. We're four meals deep because we're doing 11 meals a day right now. We have four meals in us so far. Gonna go lift. Lift, groceries for me, food for the pup, and then a ton of work to get done today. But all good things, man. So <clears throat> when we get in there, here's what I'm thinking. Excuse me, I was yawning. Here we go. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. Put a cable all the way on the top. Slap a rope on there. Some rope lat pullovers to start. And we're going to superset that with some rope, like high rows, just to put some blood in my lats. From there, go to some heavy dumbbell rows. Go to some high V-bar rows. Reverse grip pull downs. <coughs> We're feeling good today, so we're going to do the rack pulls. We're going to do everything we can do. Because last week, they were... Just, it wasn't happening. I was sick as a dog. I couldn't really eat. Couldn't do anything. I doubled up the amount of carbs for my intro workout drink as well. So I'm going to make sure to keep a better pace of sipping that while I'm training. As stupid as it sounds, but it's true. <clears throat> and besides that, I mean... really about it, you know? <clears throat> One of the fascinating things about training back <coughs> is people forget there's two different ways to train it, and there's two very important ways to train it, because you see a lot of people working out and they, when they just get started, and they get wide pretty fast, right? But if you ever notice, they're still about as thick as a Pringle. You need to learn how to train yourself to get thick and dense muscle as well as getting wide. So different movements are gonna make you thicker and different movements are gonna make you wider, right? <clears throat> and of course they'll both do a little of each. You know, let's say like a heavy row is gonna make you 80% thicker and 20% wider and a heavy pull down is gonna make you 80% wider, 20% thicker. You need to make sure that those types of exercises are in some form of equilibrium. <clears throat> because if they're not, you'll find yourself being somebody who's very wide, but there's no density in his back. Or you'll find yourself being somebody who's, you know, a thick back, but, you know, you have no wingspan. And that's no fun either. So a good rule of thumb is if you're rowing the weight, right? Excuse me. If you're rowing the weight, that's way better to build thickness. Because think of it as you're just adding and adding and adding. Whenever you're doing any type of pull-down movement, those pull-downs, that's good to make you wider and wider. So just think about whenever you're doing a movement, right? <clears throat> you're pumping blood, you're pumping well, the ability to tear a muscle into that angle. So if you're going like this, odds are you're going to get, and pretend your arms are still going through your body, right? You're getting thicker like that. If you're doing this, Pretend your arm's going through your body, right? You're going to get thicker like that, like outwise. <clears throat> yeah, man. There's nothing worse than a Pringle back, you know? Where people see you in a t-shirt and they're like, whoa, you look great. You take your shirt off and there's just like... <clears throat> there's, nothing go there's nothing going on back there. There's no detail. You're wide, but there's no details, you know? But when you have a thick back, just some dense freaking muscle fibers back there, man. It's a pretty cool thing. 
pretty cool when you hit a back double bicep not only do you take up width but you take up three dimensional space <clears throat> you know fortunately for me that 3d thickness was something I kind of always had because I always loved to train heavy I always loved to squeeze and really feel my back you know it's funny when I was um first starting to get serious in the gym, right? 16 years old. Started working out when I was 13, but really serious writing everything down at 16 years old. My favorite thing to train was always back. Always back. That's on, right? Yeah, that's on. <clears throat> because I was able to lift a lot of weight and I could go to total failure with nothing falling on me. You know, everybody loves a chest pump. A chest pump looks great. But I never really had a, a fun time training chest because if I would go to total failure, you know, and I'd never spot her, something would fall on me or you could get injured, something like that. When I was training back, just a balls out back workout, man, and I fully push myself to the limit every single day I'm in there, it was always fun for me, even at like 16 years old, because... What I just said is exactly what I thought. I'm like, you know, if I fail on this lat pull down right now, nothing's falling on me. It just goes up and, and I'm good. You know, if I fail on this row, it goes forward a little bit, but I'm okay. If you fail on a bench press, you know, you get injured. Or if there's nobody there, you, you die, I, I guess. Unless you can't get it off you. You know, I've failed on a shoulder press before, like a barbell shoulder, military shoulder press. I was maxing it out one day at 19 years old. It didn't go very well. I hurt my shoulder. <clears throat> but freaking knock on wood, man. I've never failed on a back movement to where I injured my back. Ever. You know, I've had like a... <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, excuse me, guys. I've had back movements where I went to total failure and I was tight, so like my bicep felt a little tight afterwards. I'm like, hmm, that's, that's not fun. <clears throat> but actually injuring my back, like I said, knock on wood, man, hasn't happened. It's been good. And, you know, a thick back is something to be freaking proud of. Because when you look around... <clears throat> Regardless of looking around, let's talk about competitive bodybuilding for a moment, right? <clears throat> There's a reason they say shows are one from the back and they're one from your legs. Because if you have good legs and a good back, that separates you from everybody else on that stage. <clears throat> and the same thing goes for the world, right? If you work out in general, you already look better than 99.99999% of the people on this planet. I'm talking when you're just a natural athlete you know you're just working out going to the gym doing whatever you want to do you know the bigger you get the more you stand out of course and whether that looks better or looks worse you know <clears throat> some people love it some people hate it some people think you know John's 230 some odd pounds jacked as heck and he looks great some people think he's John's 230 something pounds and he, he looks like a you know I don't know a cartoon character and not in a good way and they don't like it. But as so long as you're happy, man, as long as you're happy and you're doing what you love, that's all that really matters. That's all that really matters. <clears throat> and the bigger you get, the more extreme it goes. You know, there's people that look at Mr. Olympia and they go like, oh my God, I would never want to look like that. Or I would never want to be with somebody who looks like that. And then the majority of us were like, holy shit, I would love to look like that. I'd love to be that big. <clears throat> and so long as you're doing this for you, man, all that really matters. I have to swap lanes and then quickly swap back because the cop has somebody pulled over right there. And You know what's funny? I don't even know if it's a law or not where if somebody's pulled over and let's say the right shoulder, right? And I'm on the right lane. You gotta pull over to like basically don't be in their lane. I never knew if it was a law 
or if it was like common courtesy. I think it was, I think it's a law, but it's also kind of one of those laws where it's like, hey man, just please do it, but you know, don't cause a car accident to do it, you know, one of those, like, you're supposed to, but you know. Like when somebody doesn't eat protein, and they're supposed to eat protein, they're like, oh, I'm, I, I could put protein in this meal. It's like, you could, but are, are you going to put protein in that meal? It's like, I could. I'm like, but, but will you? You know, you could, but are you going to put the protein in that meal? <laughs> I've had that conversation more than once in my life, that's for sure. You know, your meal should consist of protein. And then you go, I could have carbs with this meal. It's like, yeah, you could, but will you? I could have fats with it. <clears throat> Not, I'm making a bowl of pasta. I could add protein. It's like, well, that's not the part that's up for debate. You know, that protein's the staple of your meals, man. Your protein is all that matters. The rest of it is just energy. But that protein is what makes a meal a meal. And I know, or rather I'm sure, that every one of us, or anybody watching this video right now, starts every meal thinking about, okay, what's the protein source going to be? And if you're not, well then I hope you learned something new today, because, you know, that's not, call it some top tier knowledge, but that's some, you know, advanced athlete knowledge where protein always comes first from there you build whatever you want the rest of that meal to be you know when I'm writing out my workout programs and my meal programs <clears throat> is this guy leaving no he's just fixing his park we were so close almost out of spot <clears throat> but when you're making your workout programs man especially when I know when I'm doing it the first thing I'm thinking about is my protein I go, I know I need protein, I know I need this many grams per day, across this many meals, how am I gonna do it? And you know, that's a solution to a problem that typically got figured out a long time ago. You know, because that really doesn't change. For the most part, you just get bigger and you add more protein over time. And eventually, I'm gonna have to pull a Yui and try to find a spot on the other side again. And then eventually, just the bigger you get, the more you add. The bigger you get, the more you add. And it's just, that's, it's about how it goes for everything. But, you know what, guys? I think, okay, I'm going to park here. I say it's okay. Give me one second. Thank you for your time. Yeah, this is a fine spot. Well, I got you here. It's been a minute since we did this. Listen to the pop. <laughs> All black everything pre-workout. We got the regular pre, which is the cherry cola flavor. We have the pump, the tiger's blood. What is tiger's blood? Bleh. What is tiger's blood flavor? I really don't know. But I'd imagine it was hard to get that flavor down. We had the there's my boy Austin. And creatine. Unflavored creatine, because I can put that in anything I want. And on that note, my friends, cheers. I gotta be honest. Where is it? Abe, all black everything. I guess the camera has it all reversed. It's a mindset, or you're seeing... Uh, tistum, uh, sty, tistumum sty. <clears throat> Not just because they sponsor me. The flavors are really good. Like the cherry cola, they have a lot of weird flavors that you don't see on the market. The cherry cola one is really good. A buddy of mine, when I was doing a, uh, an Abe Everything shoot in here, when was it? Saturday. I was doing an all black everything photo shoot. And one of the guys I was shooting with had bubblegum flavor. 
So you did the classic. If you've ever done this with your friends, you know. Lick your finger, you dip it in there. Kind of like a... Uh, what were those candies called back in the day? Where... Not a pixie stick. <clears throat> but where it was like... The solid white bar... Of like a hard sugar candy. And you'd lip it, lick it, and dip it, in, dip it in the sugar. And like the colored flavored sugars. Well regardless, you know what I mean. You lick your finger, you dip it in the guy's pre-workout. You taste it. The bubblegum one was freaking awesome. It tastes just like bubblegum. It's weird. Usually it's like, eh, maybe, maybe not, but I gotta say with the Abe stuff, man, they really have the flavors down pat. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, pretty fun. And honestly, I only use a uh, half a scoop of the pre, because I don't use a ton of caffeine when I train. I like the vasodilation to do its thing, and not so much a vasoconstriction. <coughs> but, uh, yeah, it tastes good, man. Tastes good, works great, my workouts have been awesome. And... On that note, my friends, I will see you inside for a big back pumped up freaking day. Let's go, baby.